Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. In the next couple of exciting episodes, we're going to do something a bit different and look at an official Apple tutorial on SwiftUI, specifically the one on drawing paths and shapes. And we're going to transform the code from that guide into something more manageable and just as importantly, understandable. But it's your tutorial, isn't it? Surely it can't be made any simpler. Well, if you're using native SwiftUI, probably not. You see, the native SwiftUI framework doesn't cater that well for creating shapes in a concise and clear way, making it difficult to sensibly factor things out. So this is not intended to be an exercise in dunking on the authors of that particular lesson. I think they did a great job given these limitations. What we're going to do is reproduce the final badge from that tutorial, which would be this one, and we're going to do it all in this one file. It's going to be clear, concise, simple to write, and easy to maintain. What more could you ask for? To save some time, I've got a skeleton in place of what we're going to be building, and I've added a couple of assets to my image library that we're going to be using for reference. Since we're going to be constructing the mountain in this episode, let me add that image to this said stack down here. And now I need to resize it to fill that frame. Lovely. We're going to be using a grid layout guide to help us recreate this shape. I've done a whole series on layout guides, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about them, but this is going to allow us to define a grid of columns and rows that we can use to generate points by referring to coordinates of that grid. You'll get to know them pretty quickly in this episode, and it will hopefully be obvious what's going on. We're going to need a layout guide config to start with, and the most convenient way to do that is to create a local layout guide config, develop it in a body, and once we're done configuring it, move it to the file level. This way, we won't need to resume the preview to see each of our changes. If you want to know more about that, have a watch of the video I put together on that very topic. Right, we're going to call it Mountain Layout Config, which is a layout guide config of type grid, and we're going to give it the columns 0 and 1, and the same for the rows. I'm using the version that takes an array of columns and rows here, so I can explicitly tell it where the columns and rows are, as opposed to providing a number of columns and rows which would then be equally spaced. When doing it like this, I also like to put the edge cases of 0 and 1 in because I think it makes the resulting coordinates easier to reason about. To make things even more ridiculously easy for us, we're going to apply this config as an overlay on this image, which will allow us to line up the columns and rows to the points of interest in the thing we're trying to recreate. To do that, I say layout guide and pass in the mountain layout config. And because I've set show layout guides to true, we can immediately see the layout guide. It's that very faint border around the image. By default, layout guides have a color of gray, a line width of 0.5, and an opacity of 0.5. That's fine in most cases. Sometimes, however, based on the design you're overlaying, they can be difficult to see. And in a tutorial such as this, I want them to be nice and obvious. So I'm going to set the color to red and the line width to 1. Since we've already put 0 and 1 in for both the columns and the rows, we don't have to worry about the extents, so this point is already taken care of. Now we're going to go from left to right to define the rest of the columns. As soon as we enter values, the columns will appear and it's our job to line them up to the shape. The next point of interest from left to right is this one. So we make a guess as to its position. Not enough, 0 0.3 is too much. So we go delete 2 and then we add another decimal place of three, not enough, delete four, and that's perfect. The next point is going to be this one. So let's try 0 0.3. And I think that's spot on. With a bit of practice, you can define these very quickly indeed, and it's certainly worth doing for what's coming in the shape design. Since I know what the rest of the numbers are going to be, I'll speed through the rest of these columns and rows so as not to bore you. And now that we've got our grid set up, we can cut this line, go to the top of the file, paste it in there, make it private, and now we'll have to resume. Before we continue, let's take a look at the original code used to generate this mountain shape. We've got some constants up top in a valiant attempt to make things clearer, and you can see where they're drawing the peak and base of the mountain. There's nothing too difficult going on here, right? When you try to follow the code, however, it's just very hard to do because it's so abstract. This all has to be imagined in your head, but in order to do that, you need to intimately know what all these constants mean. Translating this line, for example, to a point on the canvas 
involves the kind of mental acrobatics that I don't have the energy to engage in. And the fact that CG points need to be created all over the place along with their argument labels only increases the obfuscation. Again, to be clear, this isn't a problem with the way this code was written. The problem is that the code had to be written like this given the limitations of the framework. And it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to write clear code for anything but the most basic shapes. What's a bit odd is that the code that's provided in the tutorial actually produces this shape which is not the shape that's used in the final design of the badge in that same lesson, which is this shape. It's a lot more difficult to create the shape on the right since you have to derive the vertices in such a way that gives a continuous edge to the sides of the mountain. I don't know what led to this inconsistency, but I do know that the code would have been significantly more difficult to write and read had it produced the design that we're going to create. Fortunately, it has no bearing on the complexity when using pure Swift UI. So let's see what that looks like. If you've followed along to any of my previous tutorials using layout guides, you'll know the first thing we need to do is lay out that mountain layout config using the rectangle that we're provided in our shape. Let G equal the mountain layout config laid out in the rectangle. Now you might think that G is a short name for a constant, and it is. But when it comes to using layout guides, we want the coordinate to tell the story, not the name of the constant. So let's draw the base of this mountain first. Let's put a little comment, mountain, base. And I'm going to use an extension on path called shape, which is very similar to add lines, but it assumes the points you pass it form the complete shape. So it will internally close the subpath for you. So it's quite convenient. Path, shape, I've got an array of points here. And the first point of this shape is going to be this one, which happens to be the same as the bottom leading point of the layout guide. So I can say G bottom leading. To get to the next point, we need to go one across and five down. So that is coordinate one comma five. So I say G one comma five. The next point is this one, which is three across and three down. G three comma three. And since we've got three points in our shape now, we can see it starting to come together. Next, we're going to add this point, which is at coordinate G 5, 5. And since this shape is going to be closed for us, we've only got to add one more point, which is this one. And that is the bottom trailing point of the grid. So we say G bottom trailing. And there we are, we finished doing the base of the mountain. The peak is no different. In fact, because it's only got four points, it's a little simpler. Mountain peak, path shape, and we pass in an array of points again. The first one is going to be this point, which is G 2, 4. Then we've got this point, G 3, 1. The next point is here, which is G 4, 4. And finally, we've got G 3, 2. And that is the entirety of the mountain shape done. Now that's terrific, and I think it makes things very clear indeed. Not only are we declaratively saying which coordinates we want to draw lines between, but we also now have access to transforming and animating this shape by transforming and animating the layout guide itself. I go into much more detail in that series I mentioned, but I can now scale the shape, for example, by scaling the layout guide like this and anchoring it to the bottom. I can also rotate it with the same anchor. I could translate it too, as well as animating those transformations. So it really does open up a world of possibilities of what you can achieve when using layout guides. In addition to defining shapes this way, Pure Swift UI gives you a couple of options which may or may not feel like better approaches based on the thing you're designing, or the clarity they afford from one situation to the next. Let's take a look at the first alternative, and that is to use a subscript on Rect itself giving you access to the canvas in the form of relative coordinates. The subscript returns a CG point and takes into account the origin of the CG rect to calculate the value. For this approach, you don't need layout guides, you just need to enter the coordinates and the resulting code completely captures the shape in this one function, so it's nice and clear what's going on. In fact, the ratios I'm using in those coordinates are the same ones that we defined in the layout guide config from earlier. You do, however, lose the ability to trace over the design in the first place, but if you're building something from scratch, that might not be such an issue. You're also baking in the values, and you no longer have access to any transformation of the design. For something quick and easy, though, this might be the best approach. 
The second alternative takes elements from the other two approaches, in that you use a layout guide but you don't care about the columns and rows, and instead of integer coordinates, we use the overloaded subscript that takes the same relative values that we used in the last example. So not only are we containing the entire design in this function, but we can also transform and animate it because all the points are defined as being part of the layout guide. In the next episode, we're going to tackle the background shape. And if you look at the original code, you can see that it's actually quite a complex shape. We're also going to construct the entirety of the badge using other extensions from Pure Swift UI, which is going to make the whole process a joy indeed. So join me for that. It's going to be brilliant. If you're not subscribed and you don't want to miss that fantastic episode, consider doing that, and you probably won't. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time. <laughs>